Greetings to you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me uh, ask you a couple of questions. Now, sometimes uh, in life, we just uh, keep moving. We keep moving. Sometimes there are so many things in our mind. We uh, don't have time to sit down and reflect. Let me ask these uh, two questions. When was the last? You either advised or rebuked someone close to you. And they uh, listened to your advice or rebuke and made some changes to their life. And they came back and said, thank you for advising me. Thank you for the rebuke. The second question, when was the last when someone advised you? Or rebuke you and then you uh, listened to the advice or rebuke with an open heart open mind and uh, make some changes to your life and you thank God for the person who advised or rebuke you now uh, no one likes to be rebuked. No one likes to be rebuked. We may uh, listen to advice, advices, but whether we are going to uh, put them into practice or not is uh, another matter. We are now looking at uh, King Haza who uh, started off very well as a king of uh, Judah. Sadly, unfortunately, he had a sad ending. Why? Because he refused the advice and the rebuke of the man of God was sent to him by God, Hanani. Instead of uh, making some uh, changes to his uh, life, he was so enraged with uh, Hanani for rebuking him. What did uh, Hazar do? He threw him into the prison. Today we will look at another king of Judah, King uh, Hamadzir, who had a sad ending. Of course, uh, when he started off his reign, the Bible uh, tells us in verse 2 of our 2 Chronicles chapter 25. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not wholeheartedly. Not wholeheartedly. As we uh, continue to read to uh, Chronicles chapter 15, we are told uh, Amaziah, had decided to uh, invade Edom. And he uh, did uh, invade, he defeated the Edom. And uh, what he did after defeating uh, Edom, verse, uh, verse 14, 2 Chronicles 25, verse 14. 
when Hamaziah returned from slaughtering the Edomites, he brought back the gods of the people of Seir. Seir. Physically, he had defeated her, the Edomites. Spiritually, the Edomites had defeated her, King Hamaziah. Instead of uh, destroying uh, the gods of uh, the Edomites, was uh, we continue it. He set them up as his own gods. <laughs> Strange. The gods of the Edomites were not able to protect the Edomites, and now he brings those gods, and he sets them up as his own god, gods bow down to them and burn sacrifices to them. Very sad. Very sad. Of course, God was very, very angry. Verse uh, 15. The anger of the Lord burned against Amaziah, and he sent a prophet to him who said, Why do you consult the people's gods? The God confronted her Amaziah. The prophet her went, met up with her King Hamaziah and rebuked him for what he was doing. Goes on to say, which could not save their own people from your hand. Listen to verse 16. While he was still speaking, while the prophet was still speaking, the king said to him, Have we appointed you an advisor to the king? Stop! Why be struck down? Why be struck down? So the prophet stopped, but said, I know that God has determined to destroy you, because you have done this and have not listened to my counsel. Now while the prophet was still talking to him, the king uh, cut in and said, Stop. I don't need your advice. Stop rebuking me for what I am doing. Who are you? Did I appoint you as my advisor? So he was not prepared to listen to the advice, the rebuke of the prophet. Because, as I have been saying, uh, the prophet did not go and meet up with uh, King Hamaziah, just like Ananye, on their own, because they wanted to go and meet the kings and uh, uh, rebuke them. No, it was God who sent Anani to King Haza. It was God who sent this prophet to uh, King Hamaziah. And he just, uh, refu King Hamaziah just refused. To listen to uh, the prophets review. Now, uh, as I uh, ask this question, uh, when was the last uh, you advised or rebuked someone because of your love for them and they received your advice or rebuke with an open heart, open mind? Or when was the last when someone uh, advised or rebuked you or rebuked us and we open, received the advice or rebuke with an open heart and open mind? Now, one of the, one of the main reasons uh, why King Hamaziah refused to listen to uh, the prophet was right. Because he had defeated the Edomites, so pride had gone into his uh, head. He thought he was he has now become very, very, very powerful. When you read uh, 2 Chronicles 25, after defeating the Edomites, he even challenged the king of Israel to a battle. Because pride had gone into his head. Now, one of the reasons why people don't listen to advice or 
rebuke or why we don't listen to advice or rebuke is because of our pride. So we say, no, I don't need your advice. <laughs> we know our children, uh, once they are grown up, they say, hey, I don't need your advice. Now people say that, eh? I, I, I don't need your advice. I know what I'm doing. And if someone rebukes them, they might even get angry, like in Haza. Said, who are you to uh, rebuke me? Who gave you the right? Like in Hamazia, who uh, got angry with the prophet. Who gave you the right? Who made you the advisor? I know what I'm doing. Now, pride <laughs> the cause of the fall of many people. I guess I read a couple of verses from uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16, verse uh, 18. Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. We all know this. <laughs> we all, sometimes even quote, pride goes before a fall. Chapter 18, verse 12. Before his downfall, a man's heart is proud. But humility comes before honor. Very clear. Humility comes before honor. It's only those who have a humble heart will listen to advice and uh, even uh, repeat. Those who are filled with pride, I know it all attitude, will never listen to advice or review. They will uh, get angry, sometimes will even retaliate. I said uh, when we when someone rebukes or gives us advice, we should have the attitude of our King David. Let me uh, conclude with uh, a story. <laughs> I will always remember this story. It took place in a church between a brother and sister. Only two in the family. They, they grew up and uh, they were very, very close. And uh, both of them got married and both of them were worshipping the same church. Very loving, very caring. Suddenly something happened. Suddenly something happened. And they became enemies. They really, really, really became enemies. But both of them will attend uh, the Sunday service without fear. Very, very committed. Very, very committed. They'll come to church. And uh, because now they have become enemies. So during uh, the sharing of peace, both will intentionally go in a different direction. Because in the church, people were given some time to walk around uh, and uh, uh, share the peace and uh, hug one another. And uh, so the priest was very generous. He said, no, take some time, go around and uh, shake one another's hand. And uh, if you feel like hugging, if you like you feel like saying something. But this uh, brother and sister, they will intentionally go in a different direction. But remember, both were regular worshippers. I must say good Christians. Who loved the Lord. And uh, whenever the, <laughs> the preacher, the, the pastor spoke about uh, forgiveness or love, they will come up and uh, meet up uh, during a uh, breakfast fellowship. They'll tell him, Pastor, I feel so bad, Pastor. You know, I should, recon I should reconcile with my brother. The brother will say, I must reconcile with my sister. No, they the different. I said, Pastor, thank you for the message. And, uh, thank you for, uh, I know I, I feel guilty. I must reconcile with my brother or sister. 
they were never, never, never said his padre yeah, talking about us. But it went on for years. It went on for years. But every time when uh, the word of God was preached, whenever they felt that uh, God was speaking to them, they would meet up the priest and say, Padre, go and uh, shake hand and uh, cannot hear. Cannot, cannot, cannot. So why? <laughs> there was this pride in them. And uh, we thank God that eventually they got rid of the pride and they got reconciled. Beautiful ending. Initially, they were not prepared to reconcile because of pride. Why must I go and say sorry to my brother? Why must I go and say sorry to my sister? But then eventually, they submitted themselves to God, humbled themselves, and uh, approached one another, said sorry, and were reconciled. When they listened to the message, it was preached on Sundays. They listened to the message with an open heart, open mind. They were not criticizing the priest for talking about love and forgiveness. They did not get angry with the priest for talking about love and forgiveness. They took it into their heart. I said, God, do something. God, do something. And God did do something. And uh, God broke that uh, hardened heart and gave them the heart of flesh, a new spirit. And they got reconciled. So my dear friends, uh, be open to our advice rebuke. Now those who give advice and rebukes, I can tell you more than often are those who love us, who care for us, who want us to have the best in life. Always uh, listen. And we, if there are areas that we need to change in our life, then we must make some changes and rely on God the Holy Spirit to bring about the change. And He will definitely give, give us a strength. He will assist us to uh, bring about the changes so that we can walk in the path of righteousness for the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.